In this lesson, we'll discuss where we can apply parametric equations in the real world. The question reads, a football player kicks a football with an initial velocity of 70 feet per second at an angle of theta is equal to 35 degrees with the ground. Assuming no wind resistance, answer the following. A reads, determine the parametric equation describing the horizontal distance that the football travels from the point at which the ball is kicked. What I would like to do is illustrate what's happening. And I'll use an XY plane to do that. So pretend that this is the Y axis and that's the X axis. This represents the height in feet. So I'll write down H. And this represents the horizontal distance, which I'll simply call X. Now at the very beginning when the ball is kicked, it is traveling at 70 feet per second. Now I know a ball that is kicked from the ground will follow a hyperbolic trajectory eventually. But at the very, very beginning, we have it going up linearly like this. And the angle that it makes is 35 degrees. Now we can set this line as having a magnitude of 70 or 70 feet per second. To find out the parametric equation that represents the horizontal distance, what we have to do is use trigonometric functions. A trigonometric function here would be one that relates the hypotenuse, pretend that this is a right triangle, the hypotenuse and the adjacent side of this triangle, adjacent relative to the 35 degrees. What relates hypotenuse and adjacent is cosine. So I have cosine at an angle of 35 is equal to the adjacent, which we don't know, I'll call it x, over the hypotenuse, which we do know, it's 70. So to find out what x is, I multiply both sides by 70. I have 70 times cosine of 35 degrees, and that's equal to x. Another thing to keep in mind is that x is not only dependent on the angle and the initial velocity, it's also dependent on the amount of time that has passed by. So what I will do is take this value and multiply it by the time, which we don't know. The time will be in seconds, and remember that 70 has the units feet per second. So if I write that down, feet per second, into this formula, and I knew the amount of seconds, let's say it was 10 seconds, the seconds unit would cancel out. And this is why this formula works really well. If you're given the time, you substitute into here, the seconds unit cancels out, and you actually end up with the distance. So the equation that you see, where you have 70 times cosine times t, is the answer for A. For question B, determine the parametric equation describing the vertical height of the football. This one's a little more complicated because when something is going up, there is a force of gravity that will be pulling it downwards. You have to keep that in mind and consider that while you create your equation. In addition, the initial height also is important and you have to factor that in. The initial height here for this question is from the ground, so it's zero. And the formula is produced like this. We will use again trigonometric functions, but we need this thing this time. And that line is the opposite of 35 degrees. Think of a right triangle. Opposite in hypotenuse is sine. I'll write down sine of 35 degrees is equal to opposite, which is what we're looking for, y. And the hypotenuse is 70. Multiplying both sides by 70, I get 70 sine 35 is equal to y. Now I mentioned there are two other things that you need to consider. One of those is the initial height. So for our formula here, we'll write down y is equal to an initial height, which by the way for us is going to be zero, but you always want to write it down. Height plus this value, 70 sine 35, and multiply this by t for the same reasons we multiplied this equation by t, minus, we have to consider gravity. Gravity is going to be pulling the height of the ball down. So minus half the gravity, I'll write down 1 over 2 times g for gravity. Gravity is an acceleration value, and it's constant. In fact, it is approximately 32 feet per second over second, or in other words, 32 feet per second squared. If we were using the metric system, it would be 9.8 meters per second squared. Because we're using feet, I'll be using 32 
feet per second squared. I'll be replacing g eventually with this value, and that then gets multiplied to t to the power of 2. So cleaning this all up, y is equal to the initial height of 0, so don't write down the h, 70 sine 35t, where 70 was the initial velocity, minus 16, because 32 times half is 16, t squared. That answers question B. In question C, what is the horizontal distance that the ball has traveled at 1.5 seconds? This parametric equation represents the horizontal distance, and they tell us the time it's 1.5 seconds, so I'll replace t with 1.5. I have 1.5 seconds, multiply to 70 feet per second. I'm being elaborate here so that you can see how the units will cancel out eventually. You see, seconds will cancel out. Cosine 35 degrees is equal to x. Using our calculator, 1.5 times 70 times cosine at 35. Make sure that your calculator is in degrees. And we get 86.01. So in 1.5 seconds, this ball has traveled 86.01, or simply 86 feet horizontally. For question D, what is the vertical height of the ball after 1.5 seconds? We'll be using this formula. It's a quadratic. We have y is equal to 70 sine 35. And you can also be elaborate here and write down all the units, but now you know how they cancel out, so no need. Multiply that by 1.5 minus 16 times 1.5 raised to the power of 2. So I'll do 70 times sine 35 after 1.5 seconds. Now the effect of gravity, 16 bracket 1.5 raised to the power of 2, and we get 24.22. So that's how high it goes, 24.22. And for simplicity's sake, you can simply write down 24 as well. For question E, assuming that the kicker accurately kicked the ball directly at the center of the 10 foot high crossbar between two goal posts that is 42 yards away. Will the ball go over the crossbar? To do this question, we will be using uh, this parametric equation because this parametric equation is the one that relates horizontal distance. What's also interesting about this question is that they tell us 42 yards away, but our formula deals with feet. We need to convert 42 yards into feet once we have that value, we substitute it into x, and then from there we can solve for t. t will represent the amount of time it takes to reach 42. Once we found t, we substitute it into the other parametric equation to find the vertical distance. Now, if that was too complicated for you, let's do one step at a time. Let's make 42 yards into feet. The conversion ratio for yards and feet is that for every one yard, you have three feet. So I'll multiply this by one yard at the bottom and three feet at the top. This is how you convert. The yards will cancel out and you're left with 42 times three. That is equal to 126 feet. So I'll substitute 126 now into this X. So I have 126 is equal to T times 70 times cosine 35. To solve for t, I'll divide both sides by these two factors. So I have 126 divided by 70 times cosine of 35. This gives us 2.197 seconds. That's how long it takes to reach 126 feet, given all the parameters. I'll substitute this now into that formula specifically into here and into here, and then from there we can find out y and we can compare it to 10, 10 feet bar. So I have 70 times sine 35, and we're multiplying by that time that we just found. I don't want to rewrite it, I'll just write down answer. That's the previous output of my calculator. So that's this first part, minus 16, again, answer, raised to the power of 2. We end up with 10.96. So 2.1 seconds later, 
it will be 10.96 high. At 42 yards, the bar, the post, is 10 feet. So it does cross the post because we have 10.96. If we round that to 11, that's almost a foot higher than the goal post. So to answer this, will it go over the crossbar? Yes. So there you have it. That is how to use parametric equations to model real-world applications.